what we had last time is we had a design of, we had a session where we talked about the design of a blackjack game. And our goal is just to play one hand of blackjack, uh, at least initially, our goal is just to play one hand of blackjack against a computer, against a device, and uh, you say uh, if you win or if you lose. All right, and we're assuming that everyone uh, is aware of the basic rules of blackjack. We wrote up on the board some of the classes that we would have here. And we talked about layout-wise, there need to be some buttons, play, hit, stay. There need to be a place for the dealer's cards. There need to be a place for the player's cards. There needs to be a message that says if you won or lost. And the cards we could add. Maybe this way. Maybe we'll have them go vertically or whatever. So that would be the main layout. The, main, the activities layout. We also said that there probably would be a additional layout that would simply consist of one image view. And that image view would be inflated and added to either here or here, depending on whose turn it was to get a card. Uh, I am not, at least for now, going to talk much about the layout. We might talk more about the layout on Thursday. All right. Um, I'm going to focus on the classes. And, and the reason why is it's my experience that a lot of people coming through these classes um, don't have a deep understanding of object-oriented stuff. They may understand it to some level, but other parts of it they don't understand very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up the classes that we had defined last time. I'm going to put up the... Yeah, the classes that we defined last time. I'm going to put up the, 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 the methods that we talked about last time. I might put them up in a different order, but basically we'll do that. And then we're going to talk about a few things. I'm going to talk about a concept that is going to make our life easier, I think. Um, and it's going to make our code better. So we said there would be several classes. One is the activity itself. All right. So an activity is, you know, essentially every app has an activity. An activity is the thing that displays the UI and gets the ball rolling. So of course we're going to have the activity. That activity is going to have some listeners, depending on what we have, probably button click listeners that will implement the on button click method and will do different things depending on what was clicked. And we didn't talk about that in detail. That's one of the things I want to come back to and talk about today. We talked about there being a rules object, or class object. We talked about the rules object, and it would have things such as, things such as one, things such as, is the hand busted? We would give as an argument an array list of cards. And it would return a Boolean. Calculate the value. Return an integer. I said it will return. A, I said it return a boolean. I wrote down true, so it'll return a boolean. Uh, an integer. Um, did player win? You'll pass two array lists of cards. One that represents what the dealer has, and one that represents.
player has. Keep in mind we're just, just discussing one scenario. You could change these things around and one of the things we're going to discuss is might lead us to change some of the arguments. Probably not the return values, but the arguments. This is going to return a Boolean, where I would think we would return a true or a false, um, depending on whether they won or lost. Do we have any other methods in there that you can recall? We had a deck, which consists of an array list which has as an attribute an array list of cards. And who has a shuffle method, a constructor method, or maybe an initialized method we could use, and a deal method. This guy probably doesn't return anything. This is going to return a card. And the constructor, of course, doesn't return anything. We had a card, and it's going to have two attributes. It's going to have some indication of the suit of the card and some indication of the, um, we'll call the number of the card, even though some cards don't have literally numbers. They have uh, king, queen, jack, ace. And there'll be methods to return these values. should call it get suit. And get number. And maybe get image. Maybe we're going to put something in there that returns the image associated with that card. Two other things that we add is we would probably have a player and a dealer. And I don't know if we wrote down methods for these. We said that each of these is going to have an array list of cards. I don't think we listed anything beyond that. Now, here's a question. We have a mouse here. The mouse is a component of a computer system, right? It connects to the computer system by, well, either like, I don't know, the mouse cable or USB cable or something like that. We have one connection between this component and the rest of our system, the rest of our computer system. Would it make sense to have a connection for the wheel, a connection for the right mouse button, and a connection for the left mouse button? Of course not. That's absurd. Likewise with the keyboard. Would it make sense to have a connection for every single key? No. You bind things up, even though that this is actually a list of a set of components. All right. We sort of group all those components together that make up the keyboard, and then we plug that into. So this itself has a bunch of parts. This component has components of its own. Um, and we'll then take that, and we'll go, and we'll connect that to our computer. So that's one concept I want you to have in mind about connecting things together. It's a lot easier to do if you limit the number of connections between things, right? That's point number one. And it might, you might not think it has to do with anything. Maybe it doesn't have anything to do with anything, but I think it does. Point number two is, what would you call it if I told you to turn the light off and you turned and told him to turn the light off? What's that an example of? Uh, sort of just passing it on to somebody. Passing it on to somebody. What do they call that when, when something passes on a request to someone else. Like calling a method? Calling a method would be, would be what we do programming wise. But there's a specific term for that. When you, when you call a method on one object and all it does is, is call the method on another object. That's called delegation. All right? That's known as delegation. And I think that's an important principle here. So, let's keep those two things in mind. It's easy to connect one thing together than two things together. Or it's easier to connect two things together than one thing to ten other things. All right, Much easier to have components that just hook together, even if the one component has other subcomponents. And there's such a thing in programming as called delegation. 
I can call a method on one fun on one class, and that method will get passed on to the class that actually does it. All right. So with that in mind, here's our activity. Here are one, two, three, four, five classes that we're going to have, and presumably we're going to have. We're going to have one of these, we're going to have one of these, we're going to have one of these, we're going to have 52 of these, and we're going to have one of these. Where are we going to declare these classes? What are they going to be instance variables of? Because when we, declare, when we declare a class, we go like this, you know. We state that we have an activity, and here's the attributes for it. We might say it has a button, we might say it has this, we might say it has that. In the example that we uh, did for the one assignment, we have pizza and order classes. So you actually had both of those would live in the activity. You'd have a pizza object, and you'd have an order object, and that lived inside the activity. When you did your currency conversion, you probably had a currency conversion object that lived inside the activity. Where are these objects going to live? Where will these objects be declared? Any thoughts on that? Keeping in mind, it's easier to connect two things together than eight things together, and keeping in mind that if we call a function, we can always pass stuff on to another function. Uh, maybe like a, maybe you have like a class for that particular hand or something like that, and then that sort of delegates. Maybe. If we were going to put, if we were going to put any of those existing classes in that role, which of those existing classes would serve that role? Probably rules. Rules. Here's what I'm thinking. All right. When we declare this, we're going to have, and I'll, I'll, we're going to have something. Here's what I'm thinking. And again, you can do this some other ways, but this is, I think, the best way to do this. I'm going to declare my activity. It's going to have in it a rules object. So I'm going to call the constructor on rules. I'm going to go and I'm going to create everything I need for this game. All right? We could even rename that from rules to game, if that makes it clear. Our rules object will have what in it? Our rules object will have, in addition to all these methods that we described, it will have as attributes a deck, in the rules class. The deck then is going to be where we have the original array list of cards. to do with 
my keyboard and write and write wiring the white the, the mouse as one unit instead of wiring the right mouse unit and uh, the the right mouse button and the left mouse button. The only thing that's connected, the only connection between our activity and the game logic itself is that rules class. Which means that if we were going to take and put this on another interface, let's say we were going to have this as a mini game in some other game, right? All we would need is to establish a connection between the activity and the rules object. Now the rules object would have to talk to the other objects, but in terms of incorporating this into another activity, all we would have to do is link the rules object to the activity. And we'll do that by delegation. So, for example, let's think of a button. All right, we drew our, our interface up on the board before. And we have a play, we have a hit, and we have a stay. And player with the cards, dealer with the cards, and a label for there. So, we click the play button. And again, let's imitate that. If we were going to really play a game of blackjack, let me pull out my handy cards that I hope are still in my bag. I think I took them out. All right, good, here they are. So we click play. What happens? Well, my rules class has a deck in it. So this button is going to tell the rules to initialize. All right. What will rules initialization consist of? Well, it will call code to initialize the deck, which means create all 52 card objects and shuffle. All right. It will have code to initialize the player. What will that consist of? Well, clearing out any cards they had from the last hand. And it will have code to, to, to um, uh, initialize the dealer. What will that consist of? Well, clearing out all their cards from last time. So, when we press this button to start a new game, all right, we're only talking to two objects, all right? This button or this lister is only talking to two objects. It will talk to the activity because the activity has to do some things too, right? It has to, to blank out the stuff that was left there from before. So when I press that button, the lister has to do something uh, to the activity. That's fine. That's what we've been doing since week one, having our lister deal with the activity. and blanking stuff out or initializing it or doing calculations or whatever. But then what it will do is it will call a method on my rules class that will say initialize. And what that method will do is it will delegate that to each of its objects. So it will call deck dot initialize, p dot initialize, dealer dot initialize. All right? So that's what we mean by delegation. Then what would the code for deinitialize be? Well, it would go in and it would create the 52 cards and shuffle them. That would be the, deal, uh, the deck initialization. For the player, it would wipe out their hand. It would start them with, with no cards in their hand. Same thing with the dealer. So it would clear out those two array lists that each of those have. All right? So each of my objects is going to have an initialize method on it. And all I do is I give the command to the game to initialize, and it handles the details. So the linkage, the tethering, the coupling between my UI and business rules is, is small, right? And again, business rules, problem domain rules is probably a better way to, 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 to say it because this isn't really a business environment. This is more of a, um, you know, this is a game environment. 
But whatever our problem is, whatever our problem domain is, all right, we call that method on the problem domain object and it handles the details. And that's a classic example of, of delegation where a method on one class, all it does is it points to the class responsible and says, go and do this. So the game doesn't have any code itself to initialize. The initialization of the game is to initialize all the components inside the game. All right? And you'll see that a lot in a case like this. Now, what happens when I press, press hit? What method should it call? Keep in mind the notion of delegation. What object is it going to call a method on? Exactly. Exactly. In other words, when I click the button to hit, all right, this is what is going to happen. Let's let's write this down. Wish we had more board space here because we're running out of space. But let me try erasing this stuff. Notice the effect of this. The effect of this is that these, these event handlers, these listeners, got no code at all just about. Just teensy bits of code. That it handles the UI bits of it, right? Because the activity, the listener is tied to the UI, so it has to handle the UI parts of it. But as far as like any of the problem logic, that's sent off to the rules class. All right? So. The way I would do this would be, I have my hit button. It's going to have a listener. That listener is going to call, it's going to do something like this. I'm going to declare a card in here. Actually, I don't even have to do that. Listener's going to get back a string called image name. All right, because that's what the list, that's what the UI needs. It needs an image name so that it can go and create the image and pop it up there. All right. So on the listener, on the click listener for the hit. I'm going to call a method on the rules. So I'll say r dot hit. And it's going to return an image name, which is a string. All right? What is going to be in the rules object then? In the rules object, I'm going to have a method called hip. What is it going to do? It is going to grab the top card off the deck. How is it going to grab the top card of the deck? It's going to call the deal method on the deck. So d.deal will return the top card on the deck and it'll put it in a card variable. I then am going to grab the image name of that card, which is going to be c get image name. And that will get returned to the hit method, the hit listener. The hit listener.
compressor then will do everything that you do when you inflate. It's going to inflate the layout. It'll grab a pointer to the new image view. Because remember, that's what inflating a layout does. It's going to take this little mini XML that only consists of an image view, and it's going to create that image view and pop it here in the player's hand. We're then going to set the image name of the new image view to the value that we got returned from the R hit method. Now we could break this down into functions if we wanted to, separate functions. Notice that anything dealing with the rules is happening in the rule class or the other classes. Anything that's, that's affecting the UI is happening in the activity. So clean separation between the UI and the problem logic. And the UI only talks to the one class, the rules class. So there's not some sort of tangled web between them. All right, just talking to the one. Now, when there's a hit, one more thing has to happen, right? What's the one more thing that has to happen? The calculation. Specifically, we have to see if they busted or not, right? Because if they busted, they've lost, all right? So what we have to do is we have to check to see if player is busted. Well, that's going to be a recurring theme here, right? Where's the logic? What, what is the activity going to call? It's going to call a method on the rules that says, is player busted? All right. So after it does all this, it's going to ask the rules object, R is player busted? All right. That's going to call an is player busted method on the rules. What I would do then is remember, the, uh, the, the rules has the player as one of its attributes. I'd get the hand from the player. Array list of cards. H equals player get hand. So it's a new method on the player, a get hand method. And all it will do is it will just return the array list of the cards. We missed a tiny step here. We're going to player add C. Because if I get a hit, I have to go and add that card to the player's array list. I forgot about that. So, if the player is busted, we grab their hand, we call, there's already a method on the rules that says is busted, we pass it the hand, the is busted method does a calculation. There's already a method that says get value of hand. It does a calculation. Um, this will return a boolean that says yes it's busted, no it isn't. And then we return that. And if that's true, we know.
until the player lost. Again, a few different ways you could do this, but I think this is a way that makes sense. So when you're coming up with your design, what you want to do is you want to make sure that everything from the activity only calls things in the uh, rules class. And then the rules class delegates it where it's needed because the rules class has all those other classes as attributes. So what happens when we press stay? We switch to the dealer. So we're going to call a method on the dealer object that says take hits or something like that. And we'll probably be in a loop, all right, um, where we will call the dealer, uh, we'll, we'll call the rules object, and we'll probably return back. Uh, we could do this a couple different ways. We could return back uh, one card at a time, well, probably best to return an array of cards that the dealer got. So if they got three cards, they got three cards. And then we're going to check to see who won. We're going to check to see first if the dealer busted, then we're going to check to see who won. All right? So in thinking through the design, what I want you to do is think in terms of having all communication between your activity go through the rules object. So the, the, the activity doesn't need to know anything about cards or decks or anything like that. The activity communicates only with that one. Some of this is known as data hiding. All right? Uh, in data hiding, the idea is that people, or I, I say people, I mean classes or objects that use other objects, don't need to worry, don't need to know about the details of this. All right. The UI in this case, and again, I, I realize I'm talking about these classes as though they're people. All right. That's every single computer programmer does that at one point of their life or not, uh, or other. But the activity doesn't even know it's playing a card game. The activity doesn't know anything about cards. The activity only knows it's playing this game that has rules. I'm calling methods and I'm getting back images and I'm getting back messages uh, or booleans that say if, if the person lost or not. That's all the activity knows, all right? So this could be a dice game for as, for as much as the, the activity knows, right? Because we could be rolling dice and saying who won or who lost and what's the value and so on and so forth, all right? So by doing this, again, we are, again, this is called loosely coupled. The user interface and the, and, and the logic the problem logic really only have tiny little threads in between them. It doesn't have big giant threads where everything's all tangled up. Any questions about this? Let's review what you need for this week and what you need for next week. Let's see what time it is. Oh, we're, we have a few minutes left. For this week, I want to design. What do I want my design to look like? I want my design to look like a... Um, a class diagram, all right? Class diagram looks like this. And there's a resource out there on Canvas, I believe, that shows a class diagram. And we've done a lot of this together in class, so I'm hoping you all have very similar class diagrams. But, class is drawn as a rectangle. You have the attributes of the rectangle up here. You have the methods here. Is it like a UML diagram? Yes. Okay. Yeah. A UML diagram, but we're not going to be like, um, not going to be over picky about the form. So, you know, UML has very strict guidelines and all that. I just want to make sure that we have the, the info. So if I was going to draw the activity, The attributes would be, for the activity, would be probably something like the rules, the listener for the hit button, the listener, 
And again, these aren't the exact class names, but the, the listener for the stay button and the listener for the play button. You can draw then a connection between the objects it disconnects to, like this. Listeners just have it on click. Now, what's our other? Big guy is the rules. The rules got look something like that. The rules and the activity communicate. So there's a line between them. Um, you are going to have uh, a um, a deck object, a dealer object, and a player object. Then you'll have all the methods that we talked about before, plus the methods that we talked to today. Finally, these are going to use the deck object, the player object. The deck is going to be using a cards object, and the player is going to be using, or the player. You could do this a couple ways. The simplest way would be to have a separate player and dealer class. An alternate way would be to use inheritance. Because really a dealer is just a special kind of player. Right? And if you wanted to, you could make a dealer class inherit from the player class. I show that in red because you don't have to do it that way. That's the harder way. Maybe the harder way. Maybe the easier way. I don't know. It's a different way. It's harder. It's definitely harder if you don't understand inheritance. All right? But that would be the sketch of what this would look like for your class diagram. I don't want you spending hours, like, uh, obsessing about, like, making sure it looks like a perfect drawing. All right? So even if you like draw it on a sheet of paper and take a high res photo of it and turn it in, that's okay. All right, but you do want the methods and you want the attributes and all that. That's for this time. For next time, I want you to create the button so that um, I forget what I said. Let me pull it up real quick. I want you to implement part of the functionality. I think the part of the functionality that just deals with the um, that just deals with the uh, dealing of the uh, players' cards. Are you talking about uh, homework seven? Yes. Okay. Uh, you said um, deal two cards to the player, display the cards. Have a hit, stay, and reset button. Hit will display another card. Stay does nothing. Reset clears everything. And that's it. Okay. So reset cl clears everything and starts another game. So the reset really should be the play button. I called it wrong. So essentially all you have to do is be able to hit and add cards to, the, to that. That's the one that's due next week. You don't have to worry about a dealer. You don't have to worry about scoring your hand. If that is too easy and you whip through that like very quickly, the UI, then I would work on the, or keeping a running tally of every time you add a card, what's the value. Um, even get, then getting into, but only doing it for the, for the player, the next round will be incorporating a dealer into it. Are there any questions over what you need to do for this? How clear or fuzzy is this? Do you have a pretty good understanding of what I'm trying to get at with the sending everything through the, D, uh, the rules object? Does that make sense? Yeah, I actually have a question about it, though. Yeah. So what would be the advantage of doing that versus um, just having a dealer that just does the dealing and then there's no activity? 
the advantage is, is let's imagine I have a totally different user interface. All right. I only have to deal with connecting that user interface to the rules object. All right. So I can just treat that as one big component as opposed to having little connections here and there and pulling stuff out. I can treat all of that just through one component. All right. So I don't have to understand even, I don't even have to know that there's, like I said, the, the, the UI doesn't even have to know there's even cards involved. All right. It just, it just knows to call these uh, event or these methods on that. And again, that's called as very loosely coupled. There isn't a tight connection. A tight connection is where a bunch of objects in your business rules will talk to your UI. All right. And that just adds for more maintainability. For a lot of these things, think if something changed, what the impact it was. So again, if we were going to incorporate a, a blackjack game into a totally other UI, it would be much easier just to deal with that rules object than have to deal with all the other objects. Uh, again, how do I want to say this? Um, in the classroom, I feel it's good to present things like theoretically the best way. You know what I mean? Would I ever write it the other way? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right. That, that would be a little bit of a compromise. But I would think that the pure theoretical best way would be this way. Then the UI, you know, we, we talk a lot about classes knowing about this. The UI doesn't need to know anything about the game. It just needs to know how to talk to the rules object. All right. And all the data inside the rules object, the fact that there's a player, the fact that there's a dealer, all that's hidden from the UI. All right? The UI just needs to know what to call on there and what to do with what you get back from it. So that's, that's how I would describe the, 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 the benefit from it. Other questions? Is anyone staying for lap? No? Okay. We'll see you on Thursday.